excited. Hello, good greeting friends. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Hi, my name is Mel. Welcome to a 48-hour readathon vlog. Now, last time, last month, we did a public 24-hour readathon and that didn't bode too well for me. I was also trying to beat a reading slump, which I am proud to announce I am officially out of. And so this month, I am doing a 48-hour round again with my Patreons. I am excited for this because I feel I have set a realistic but mighty TBR that I am just very excited about. I feel very hopeful about this. So let me show you my TBR. It's literally just three books, one that I am already currently reading. For the book I'm currently reading that I would really love to finish in this 24-hour readathon is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I am currently 115 pages in. I am loving this. Also, <laughs> where is it? Here, you see that? Vin just chewed up my bookmark. Anyway, point is, I am really enjoying The Atlas Six. I am loving the characters, how terrible they are really, because they're all like morally gray, borderlining on like terrible people. People, and I am vibing with this. I'm listening to the Batman soundtrack as I literally read this and it's just 10 out of 10, but after I finish this, we're moving on to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I've been hearing amazing things about this book and I feel like I've yet to hear anything negative about it. And I don't know anything beyond the blurb, which literally says six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder. It's short. It's supposed to be fast paced and super thrilling and just super incredible. So I have a lot of hope for this because I have not read a thriller in a hot second. And last but not least, I of course wanted another fantasy on my list because if you look at my recent reads on Goodreads, it's all been literary fiction and I'm over it. I don't want to look at another literary fiction book in a hot minute, no more for a little while. And so I have grabbed We Hunt the Flame from my shelf and I am very excited about this. As you guys know, I've been meaning to read this ever since I got my Illumicrate copy and also just because again, TikTok seems to hype this up a lot. Listen, even if I don't like this, at least I have a pretty book, but let's hope that on top of it being a stunning book, it actually is phenomenal. Wish uh, me luck and I'm gonna log off to read now because we're literally sprinting and I used most of the sprint to make coffee, starting with the Atlas Six. Love you the most. And I'll see you guys when I have an update. When I tell you guys I'm sleepy, I'm like not even kidding. So it is very, very late. It is currently 1.21 a.m. Hello. And I... I'm here to update you on The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. I am loving this. Oftentimes I go into books and even if I'm reading for fun, my analytical brain just like kicks in and I start nitpicking. And I think there's very few instances in which I have actually entered books and I completely kind of disassociate, I guess you could say, from like the critical side of it to the point where I'm just there purely for the enjoyment aspect of it. I'm not thinking about the twists and turns. I'm not thinking about predicting anything and it's very rarely happened and I think the most recent case that I had with that was the way of kings and that was last year like that was a while ago but this though I'm having such a similar experience in which I'm literally entering this book with zero expectations I'm entering this book purely just to just to read it without the need to, again, overanalyze anything. For those of you who don't know what the Atlas Six is about, we basically follow this cast of six characters and they all possess some sort of magical ability, whether it's to be able to manipulate force and energy or being able to compel people or reading people's minds or seeing through illusions. If you were to measure them in a scale of power, they are probably higher up there than the average person and that's what makes them so special. And so they are sought out by the Alex in society, which is a society that takes care of knowledge, essentially, and they recruit them to be a part of the society. However, they will need to go through a set of trials and training in order to be inducted into said society. But the catch there is that only five of them will be actually inducted and one of them will be left out. And while I do think that the dark academic vibe is there, this is not really a dark academia, but it is dark in tone. I feel everything is so cutthroat in this book and there is such high tension running. There is such high survival instinct for all of these characters.
characters. None of these characters are really good. They're all morally gray. Some of them are more so on the side of being not so good. And so I think because the question of morality is so at a constant in this book, and again, between the tension and the survival and that sort of desperation to actually make it within the five that will be inducted, I do think it gives it a slight academic competitiveness to it without it necessarily being dark academia because it's not set at a school. And the society itself is not really in the realms of ninth house, let's say, where we literally see this society performing rituals and we really get to experience it firsthand. This is more so, I feel, an outsider's perspective into the mystery of the society, especially because none of them are really in it yet. And there's such mysticism towards what the society actually is and what it actually does because there seems to be almost this ulterior thing that none of them are aware about. It's really vague and I don't think it's vague because, oh, Olivia Blake just missed. No, I think it's an intentional thing where us as the reader were meant to be as lost within this society thing and as not in the know as the characters because we are following each of these characters in their own points of view. And so we literally just know as much as they do, which I also think is the reason why I am just in the moment. And so I love being in the dark. I love being able to kind of find out information with them. And I love it. Like the vibes in this are absolutely incredible. And I also think each of their powers is deeply fascinating. And I think Libby in particular, I don't know why this whole force physical thing energy that they can manipulate is giving me like such chaos magic from Wanda Maximoff that I'm literally kind of picturing that in my brain. And that's not what it looks like, but that's certainly what I'm picturing and I'm having the best time. And I also think all of their relationships, I mean, calling them relationships is also a stretch because they're not, none of them are friends, but I think all of their rivalries and all of their intentions are so messed up, but so cool all at the same time that I am just waiting to see this unfold. And I've heard that the ending of this book is also crazy, so I can't wait to see what it does. You know what? I'm just gonna film like this. Good morning, friends. So today's Saturday. It is 9.30 something a.m. Last time I checked and I'm about to have a breakfast. I've got a nice little sandwich right there. And I also have a watch party for Avatar The Last Airbender with my Patreons in about 20 something minutes. And I also, at some point in the morning, probably before I start reading, I need to unbox her need to unbox a not only one fairy loot box but two fairy loot boxes so we're gonna do that here i'm excited about it i'm excited about seeing both books and the items so i'm about to sit down and have breakfast because i am hungry hello so it is high time to do an unboxing hi i have two fairy loots this is april and may and i have not opened these because i was organizing the move and then i was moving and i literally got the may box like three days ago but it is time to open these and see what's inside let me see which one is okay so this one is the april one the only reason why i know that is because i had to open this one the other one because i thought it was the legend set apparently it, it wasn't the first thing i see is this i'm kind of unsure as to what this is <laughs> got this little box moment which is just a bunch of constellations what is a person if not the marks they leave behind by ve shop wait is this out of the rue inspired yeah addy canvas basket okay this is actually really nice it's got some handles on the side and the art is by blanca design we have one of these paper envelopes and this is stop strange the dreamer moth pin it's inspired on Strange the Dreamer. I love that. And it was designed by Jess Hawk. We've got a Night Circus tray, which is very, very gorgeous. And I actually use all of this stuff, so that's great. And it says, and there are really never endings, happy or otherwise. I need to get to the Night Circus. 
I need to read this. Fairy lights. I have been wanting to get fairy lights, or I've been thinking about it at least. Finn just keeps shaking the camera. I'm so sorry, but I've been thinking about fairy lights for my bookshelf because they look really, really pretty. And I feel like it also would just be a vibe on the office because when I'm like filming at night or if I'm working, I think just turning on, be it neon lights or fairy lights, it would just give it a really pretty look. But I am noticing that these are actually like in the form of hearts. Beauty girl pose. I really wish they would have done just like regular fairy lights without the shape of a heart. I also feel like if they would have done just like regular fairy lights, maybe they could have included more than this. Although manufacturing wise, I don't know what the price difference would be between this and like regular fairy lights. So I am appreciative of the fairy lights, just maybe not so much that they are in the shape of a heart. All right, so I was very confused for a second. I was like, what is this item? But in the March box, we were supposed to get playing card set and I didn't get mine. I know some people did, but I didn't. So fairy loot sent it, which I'm very grateful for. And the character art is inspired by only a monster, daughter of the moon goddess, six crimson cranes and a jade fire gold. So let's open these because honestly, I'm probably not gonna use these as playing cards, but instead I'm gonna use them as bookmark. They've got really nice red gilded edges. See, these are pretty. These are gonna come in super handy as bookmarks. This one, King, Queen, and then whatever the J is. So here's another set of characters. And again, I'm just gonna literally, I'm separating them from the actual card game so that I can put this in my little bookmark bin because it's gonna look so cool. I think this is only a monster because it looks very akin to the illustrations that I've already seen for the book on like the end papers, but these are gorgeous. I love love these so much like they're actually really really pretty yeah and i believe this is daughter of the moon goddess because it's got the same flower as the cover but literally just wow the art for these is just Stunning. And now we're down to the books and the tarot cards. And then the tarot cards are from Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And the design is by ARZ28. So stunning as always. And since this is a new deck, we're doing different backings. I've already showed these, but I just love the backing for these even more than the purple ones. It's just, ah. Oh. It's just otherworldly, honestly. I didn't know we were gonna get two books. Was I the only one that didn't know we were gonna get two books? Because that was a schwacker. But I'm actually really, really excited about the one that we got this month. This is Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. Arpan. And I recently read The Astonishing Color of After. And I really, really loved it. And I do think this is like sci-fi fantasy, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's actually also signed by Emily X. Arpan. Is this stamp or is this actually signed? The sprayed edges are stunning. They're bright. The cover itself is really beautiful and the back of this says Hunter Yi has perfect aim with a bow and arrow But all else in his life veers off course haunted by his family's past mistakes The only things keeping him from running away are his younger brother the supernatural wind and the bewitching girl at his new school Luna Chang dreads the future graduation looms ahead and her parents expectations are stifling Then her life is turned upside down by the strange new boy in her class the unearthly fireflies that follow her around and an ominous crack that begins to spread across the town of Fairbridge. As Hunter and Luna navigate the feud between their families and uncover hidden secrets, everything around them begins to fall apart. All they can depend on is their love, but time is running out and fate will have its way. I just got chills reading that. I loved Emily X. Arpan's writing in The Astonishing Color of After, so I'm really excited to experience it here. And I'm really glad that I have like a special edition of this. This is the first time I'm hearing about this book. Like I didn't know this release was like coming. Like I had no idea. So I I'm just really excited that this ended up being a thing for Fairy Loon. Super excited. Okay, and then for the actual book for April, she goes crazy for it. Like, it's wild. She literally fights with the bags. Like, it's crazy. We have got the letter by the author. And then we also have an art print that obviously represents the story and the book. And as well, we've got the accompanying bookmark that is also the theme for the month, Bittersweet. We've got the book, which is Blood Scion by Deborah Filet. Oh, if it's not, please just... <laughs> I'm 
so sorry. This is the copy of the book that we got for April. We've got a really beautiful spine. Got a really great design on the back as well. Obviously, we've got some blue sprayed edges all around. And then we've got the signature by the author on some really, really great end papers. But I love, and this is my personal take, I love when we get these signatures on a special page like this. So I, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, we actually have art under the dust jacket too. Awesome. Okay, we've got this art under the dust jacket. I love the color scheme for this. The color scheme for this is like very, very like spacey lo-fi. This is the design under the dust jacket. And I love that it essentially is just the same as the cover, but without the title. So if you wanted to have this displayed, it looks really, really great. And for a synopsis, because I actually don't know what this is about, this says, I am a descent. Stop! <gasps> okay, I am interested. Wow, okay. I am a descendant of Shango, the god of heat and fire. I am a living inferno. I am a dead girl walking. Okay, first of all, dead girl walking, Heathers, hello. But also, Shango, I am so interested now because deities gods hello 15 year old sloan can incinerate an enemy at will she is a scion a descendant of the ancient orisha gods but under the brutal rule of the luces her identity means her death her mother knew as much she disappeared trying to hide sloan's truth but if she can infiltrate the luces she could destroy her enemies the people who think of her as less than human the overlords responsible for her mother's disappearance i am now very interested in this as soon as i saw shango i got probably too excited as somebody who finds deities and gods and just is very into tarot it's very interesting to me okay water break for me but we're moving on to the second box we have here cloak and dagger all right and i see we have a mug celestial kingdoms designed by kudriakin kudriakin and let's see what this looks like love that it's got the inside itself it, it's like a lilac shade and it does have the moon and everything on the inside side yes it is daughter of the moon goddess inspired and this is what the mug looks like oh we got a scrunchie set i know people probably hated this but i'm here for this from blood on ash inspired I spoke too soon, but I'll still use these because they're scrunchies. So we've got two scrunchies in the set. We've got this white one with, I can read it. I can't read it. And then we've got this with the poppies and roses, poppies, and then the dagger. This little bag. Oh, okay. Stardust tea strainer. Oh, wow. Okay. This was not what I was expecting, but I actually quite, you can see my mouth We have got a red rising bottle opener. Hello. I am intrigued. This was designed by Jess Hawk. Beauty Guru Pose. Hello. Vin is also currently playing with the other fairy loot box. Anyways, we are down to the last few items of this box. So before I get onto the actual book, let me get into some collectible bookmarks. Hello. The God Collection. I don't know what they're calling them, but we've got some new bookmarks from the collection. They're like Coiled. And I would like to believe that this is Loki and the snake. And this is definitely a gumiho. So what are these? Um, uh, foiled mythology bookmarks. That's what they're calling them. And it was designed by Grace Zoo Art. And yes, it is Loki and it is also a gumiho. And they're number three and four in the collection. So very excited to keep it going. Here are cards. These are these hollow vows by Lexi Ryan, also ARZ28. And the characters are Bree, Sebastian, and Finian. They do look really stunning. I am gonna have to read these hollow vowels. What happens if I read it? <laughs> soon. Okay, had to go finish the Avatar watch party that I was doing with my Patreon because I was definitely multitasking. Hello. I know that the book is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. And I'm actually very excited about this because my Patreon actually, she's got the zoomies. Yes, my Patreon actually ended up voting for this as our Patreon book club pick for July. So I'm actually super excited about it. And we've got the bookmark that's representative of the book. Hello. 
hello with the theme cloak and dagger obviously letter from the author i'm actually living for the purple can i just say that i'm i'm here for it it is really really pretty it's all obviously purple you've got the cover then we've got the back which has got some purple swirls and then we've got the spine and then we've got some lilac braid edges all around so two consecutive months that we've got in like block sprayed edges i really don't care if it's stenciled or sprayed like i really don't have a preference and papers which are also on the purple realm i wonder what made them choose purple instead of the orange and just kind of playing with the orange costumes i really wonder what made them go let's do purple but it's really really pretty we've got this under the dust jacket which also like low-key is very similar this part right here kind of similar to the we hunt the flame hardcover from illumicrate this also says in the back neither here nor there but long ago Ooh. and is it signed by the author it is indeed signed by the author and i love that we've got like a little moon right there so it is inspired by stories from 1000 nights and it weaves the gripping tale of a legendary smuggler a cowardly prince in a dangerous quest across the desert to find a magical lamp hello and this says neither here nor there but long ago luli al nasari is the midnight merchant a criminal who with the help of her jinn bodyguard hunts and sells illegal magic when she saves the life of a cowardly prince she draws the attention of his power powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamb. With no choice but to obey or be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son to find the artifact. Aided by her bodyguard who has secrets of his own, they must survive goal attacks, outwit a vengeful jinn queen, and confront a malicious killer from Luli's past. And in a world where story is reality and illusion is truth, I love that, Luli will discover that everything, her enemy, her magic, even her own past, is not what it seems and she must decide side who she will become in this new reality. Those were honestly some really, really great boxes and I can't wait to see what they do for June. But now it's time to do some reading. y'all i look like trash i'm like all over the place but this book it's five stars for me i love this and i love how in the end its premise was sort of similar to middle game which you guys know is literally one of my favorite books of all time so I feel my reading experience with this was so similar to Middle Game because it really does deal with characters who have a lot of power. And there's almost this question to godhood almost and what exactly they can achieve and attain through having this power. And there's also this element of inevitability almost with the plot of the book and the sequence of events and exactly what goes down. And also just the whole time thing was like so fascinating into how it played into this and I love how there was hints to the particular like oh there were so many hints for the ending and you know when you read something and your brain just like flashes back to everything you've read and you're like holy shit that's what it was and that's exactly what I just experienced with this book I absolutely adore this and I can't wait for the atlas paradox to come out this book just ate it up. There's also this sort of, I won't call it a threesome scene, though I have been calling it that because I feel like that's a little bit of a stretch, but just know there's this entanglement, I guess you could call it, between three of the characters. I love smut, you guys know this, but sometimes smut is not good. And the way that authors write it sometimes, just a little bit underdeveloped, there's not enough tension, there's not enough buildup, and sometimes it really does feel a little bit, you as a reader almost, or I at least, do I feel a little bit desensitized to it because it really does feel like I don't know again it's like the the lack of sensitivity or sensuality of like porn sometimes but this though it's a fade to black almost everything leading up to what we know happens after which is obviously the sex is so good because it's sexy and it was just so 
sultry. Like those are the words that I want to use. And I love it. It's a very small scene, but it just did everything and it didn't leave me wanting more. And the connection between the characters, Nico and Libby, I need them to get together in the next book or I will go insane. I swear to God. <laughs> it was so good. And also just the heroes vibes, like the TV show. You guys know how much I love the heroes TV show. A certain level of mysticism and like mystery to this where you finish the book and you don't really have answers to anything like you kind of do but like I've left the book more confused which is why I want to reread like the last part but I want to read it in the traditionally published edition because I want to see like how it's different because people have said that it's different I'm just like reeling I'm gonna start in my dreams I hold a knife after this but just know Olivia Blake is that girly So I have not updated you today at all and it is literally 9 31 p.m. on Sunday And the last time I updated you was yesterday also around this time I think and so today was filled with a lot of coffee and that's just where we're at I was not feeling at my best today. I was feeling very tired I was feeling kind of under the weather and that's just how today has been but I did start in my dreams I hold a knife and this book is so good now I don't know why I thought because I literally read the back at the start of the video and this literally says college reunion I don't know why I computed that this was YA it's not it's most definitely adult the main character is currently in her 30s but we do get alternating timelines so we get the now when they're all out of college you know they're all in their jobs whether they're consultants whether they're influencers whether they're lawyers and we also have the past when they were in college and when the whole tragedy happened so as a little bit of a synopsis before i start raving about this book we have a group of friends they all resided in the same building in college called east building or east east house and so they all lived there and they were a group of seven friends and one of them ended up dying heather ended up dying and they claimed that her boyfriend at the time jack was the one who did it however he was absolved of all allegations and it was never really proven that he was the one who actually committed murder. This girl was literally killed with scissors. Yes. And so they still to this day, present time, don't really know who committed murder. And we follow this story in the scope of our main character, Jessica, who was obviously a part of the seven, now six. And we follow her because she was very much intrinsically connected to all of them. And it seems like her more than other people in the group knew stuff about each and every person in the group that was not open information or was not publicly divulged to everybody in the group, which I just find incredibly interesting. And she was also romantically involved with Mint, who was another person in the group. And this book, Jessica in particular, is giving me Gone Girl vibes. And I am here for it because there's this tone almost of jealousy, but also this sort of vindictive tone to her, which I am very much enjoying, but there's also something really interesting about her character, which I think gives the story even more mystery. It gives the story even more of a morally gray tone overall, because all of these characters are not really good people, but Jessica in particular, because she is constantly seeking approval and she is constantly looking to fit in and that's at the expense of herself. She is constantly giving up parts of herself to change and morph herself into what she thinks people want in order to be liked, in order to be loved, in order to be paid attention to. And it's just so interesting. You start out the story and you really see this version of Jessica who is really at her prime, supposedly according to her. She's got the perfect hair color, the perfect salary, the perfect job. She has a really kind of outdone herself in whatever version she projected she would be when she was in college. 
and she now in this college reunion is really going there mostly because she wants to show off and she wants to almost make people feel inadequate in comparison to her and it's really just a projection of how she was made to feel when she was younger but I don't think I've ever read a character like this, especially not being the main character. And so it's just so interesting to get sort of the full scope of the story through her because she is such an unreliable vessel for the story. Because there's always the question, obviously, of who did it? Did she do it? Was she involved somehow? And I think because of who she is as a person and the way that she is presented in the story, it makes you question her morality and her innocence even more. And I love that because I don't often read books like these. I also think Ashley Winstead nailed the thriller sort of horror vibes. And I say horror vibes because I do think there's some of that when Jessica sort of has these episodes of these mini flashbacks, which she represses and she's like, no, no. And when she does have like those sort of episodes, I'm calling them, not that it's an episode itself, but it, it's very episodic in the way that it doesn't happen very often. But when it does, you know what it reminds me of? Low key Black Swan, the movie with Natalie Portman. And I love that movie. That's one of my favorite films. So I feel like this is making it hit harder for that reason. And it's just the tone, the writing is just so suspenseful. It's so perfectly paced. All of them are like not good in their own right. So it's just incredible. I am here for all of it. And the way that the book starts too, your body has a knowing, like an antenna attuned to tremors in the air, or a drowsing rod, tracing things so deeply buried you have no language for them yet. The Saturday it arrived, I woke taut as a guitar string. All day I felt the hum of something straightening my spine, something I didn't recognize as anticipation until the moment my key slid into the mailbox, turned the lock, and there it was. With all the pomp and circumstance you could count on Duquette University to deliver, a thick, creamy envelope stamped with a blood-red emblem of Blackwell Tower in wax along the seam. The moment I pulled it out, my hands began to tremble. I'd waited a long time and it was finally here. Listen, this book is so good and I don't know why I put it off for so long, but now I'm like super excited to read anything that Ashley Winstead puts out, first of all. And then second of all, I can't wait to see like who done it. So, 10, 11 a.m. on a Monday. It has been a lazy morning for Vin and I. It is raining and it has been raining for hours now. So I had to take a shower to like properly wake up, hello, wash my hair, do all the things because otherwise I think I'd still be in bed. So, finished this last night and hello. This is hands down probably like my favorite thriller that I've ever read. Verity was like my top spot, but like this has just like knocked Verity aside, but like Verity is still a close second. But holy shit, this is good. The obsession, the sex, the dark academia feels, the unreliable narrator, the facts that nobody is really good in this and everybody has an ulterior motive, but also the facts that our main character is like constantly trying to prove herself and constantly trying to make herself come across as superior, like the inferiority complex that is making this girl act like she has a superiority complex is like unreal to me. It's just so freaking good. And it really is kind of like the Spider-Man meme where like everybody's like pointing at each other, like you, you. That's what this book was because everybody had like their own moment to kind of be pointed the finger at. And it really felt like a game of Clue with the obsession and abstract nature of something like Black Swan. It was just phenomenal. And I like low key want to like reread this and like annotate it because even in the midst of all of the craziness, even in the midst of all of the mystery, the writing 
is so beautiful. It's just, it, it really is gripping. And there's just even moments that are like terrifying, but I'm like, I kind of want to remember that for like all time. It was just so, so good. I was part bamboozled and not because I did have like my list of top three suspects. And so one of them did end up being like the ultimate person who did the thing. But when you see the character's reasoning towards doing the thing, it doesn't stop being any less crazy. And I also love that the book doesn't only have one reveal, like it has multiple reveals of different magnitudes, but it does have different reveals for basically each character that we get to meet in this book and so it was just so so good and i love how everything was really foreshadowed and everything just if you grab the red string it's like everything really is connected and everything does have its own red herring and its own little foreshadowing and it just nothing happened out of nowhere and these are the thrillers i love to see or that i would like to read more of so if you guys have more like thriller recommendations among this realm which is just like twisted and it's an unreal reliable narrator maybe and everything just like really really makes sense and there's nothing that comes up out of nowhere do let a girl know it's time for we hunt the flame failed. I felt the readathon on high. So let me tell you something. I was really looking forward to reading all weekend and just doing that first and foremost. And I didn't really read as much as I wanted to. I did finish two books. So by regular standards, it was a success. By Mel standards, I failed. Am I being too harsh on myself? Probably. But I just had a really clear vision of what I wanted the weekend to be. And sadly, it did not go according to plan. So that's just kind of how it went. And then I extended the readathon till Monday for myself. And guess what? I didn't do on Monday. Read. <laughs> And so it was just overall an absolute mess. But I did start We Hunt the Flame on Monday and I did read We Hunt the Flame during the week. And I am now on page 163, which is the start of part two. And so I just thought I'd bring you guys an update before I close this off because I don't have an outro and I don't have a thumbnail, which is why I'm wearing the same getup as the intro, hoping to make something work without having to put makeup on. But I'm literally reading this as I listen to the Game of Thrones soundtrack. You can tell there's a comment thread with my fantasy reads and this is just top tier i am really enjoying this it does not read ya in the slightest we follow our two main characters safira and nasir and they both come from very different backgrounds but they have sort of one thing in common and it is that they kill and they kill to live or they kill to kill and so nasir is the sultan's son and he is an assassin he did not choose this lifestyle for himself however after his mother died the sultan appointed this job to him because he was trained and he was skilled in the art of not murder necessarily, but just he is a very skilled individual in regards of everything military, I guess you could say. He is very stealthy. And so he does the Sultan's dirty work. And that is not a lifestyle that he wants for himself. And you can tell that that is not who he is, but he is constantly pressured by this patriarchal system that his father keeps pushing down on him. And you can tell that there is a lot of toxic masculinity. Things we also see in daily life, like men being taught not to show emotion, men not crying because they were taught so. And then on the other end, we've got Safira, who is a huntress, but people know her as the hunter because Lord forbid, a girl is actually skilled at something that women are not supposed to do. Her POV is really rich with a lot of commentary on the patriarchy and this construct that is very, very much outdated and how she is scared. She is literally terrified of being holy herself in fear of what men around her will do, how they will react, and particularly for the caliphate, particularly for these figures in power who obviously benefit greatly from the patriarchy to not find out because again, it'll have really dire consequences if they do. And so her POV is just fantastic with the commentary. I am loving every single second of it. And I am loving her owning up to who she really is and not wanting to hide anymore and just being so badass because there's literally a point where she goes, you know what? 
I don't fucking care anymore. I'm gonna snatch this fucking kingdom out of everybody's hands and y'all are gonna come for me. And you know what? I'm gonna kill you when you do. And it's just great. I just love the way that she is developing as a character and I can't wait to see where Nasir goes as well and what'll happen when they meet up. Because now, getting into the actual plot of this, it is set in Arawiya, a land that has lost all of its magic. An event really big happened that just poofed the magic away. And it's now Nasir and Safira, both on their own ends, are essentially embarking on a quest to find this magical artifact that can restore magic to Arawiya. However, they are both seeking it out for completely different reasons. Again, it doesn't read like YA. I definitely think the pacing is much more akin to an adult fantasy where it's very slow and it takes its time to first set the world and set the characters and who they are as individuals so that later on in the story they can meet up and then whatever ensues, ensues. But I am loving the pacing. The writing is also really stunning. The commentary again is just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And I am just in love with Safira, if I'm being honest. I think her as the main character is phenomenal. There is almost such a rage to her because she does not want to conform, yet she finds herself doing so in fear. And so I think the more and more she realizes that she shouldn't be settling for whatever society is telling her, she finds herself more and more enraged by the things happening around her and the way that things have worked for so long and really wanting to break a cycle that has seemingly no end. And so I am loving just all of it. It is literally so good. I'm glad that I picked it up, not necessarily on the weekend, but on Monday and that I've started reading this because I'm taking my time with it and I am enjoying it. And I am hikey glad that I didn't read this during a readathon because I am just reading a little bit of this every single day and just literally having the best time. But yes, besides that, there is really nothing else to say, friends. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you've read any of these books, let a girl know all of your opinions. I love chatting about books with you all and I just love seeing you guys' take on them because it really just sparks great conversation and if you have not read any of these books maybe or if you just want to discuss something else let me know down in the comments what you're currently reading and how you're liking it go ham as much as you'd like because I love lengthy comments I just love them I love talking to you and if you've reached the end of the video let's leave a sleeping emoji because quite honestly if I was not sleeping then I was immensely tired and coffee was the only thing that got me through it if I'm being honest Honest. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. A girl is constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you don't want to miss. And if you want to support this kind girl, <laughs> I do have a Patreon. It is always linked down below and you get a bunch of cool perks if you do sign up and monthly readathons like these. You can also take part in if you do join us. So it'll be pretty cool to have you over there for next month. And yes, I love you guys so much. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'm a skedaddle, finish editing this video and then just put it up for you guys. So love you the most and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.